I'm so delighted to have this opportunity, David, to have a dialogue with you and to share some of the things I've been wanting to ask you and explore with you since we first met a few years ago at the Course in Miracles conference in London, where I spotted you. We were both speakers at that conference and I immediately felt a resonance and a recognition and a parallel and a desire to explore that in some dialogue. And so here we are with uh, both of us having new books out, yours called This Moment Is Your Miracle and mine called The Way of Grace. And um, it's a joy to be here with you. Mm, I'm so grateful, yeah. The, I think these moments come along where you can, you have this feeling in your heart like, wouldn't that be fun? Wouldn't that be helpful? Wouldn't that be exciting to have a, a dialogue and to just call on the spirit and uh, it brings in the nuances. That's why I, uh, I like dialogues and I, I like to collaborate and I like to be aware of, of those that are really into the presence and the experience of grace and, and, and living in presence. And uh, you know, there's a recognition when you meet someone and you feel it immediately and you can feel the devotion Really, the devotion is so palpable. And uh, that was my experience when we first kind of synchronistically just happened to sit down <laughs> next to each other in the front row <laughs> as we're listening to some of the speakers. And then it was just like a, an ongoing uh, opening. But you know, I, I felt such a very, very strong uh, recognition at the beginning, like, oh, I know you. I know you. Yeah. Yeah. Lovely. Yeah, so I'm just curious. It seems that you've been walking the path for many years, as have I. And, you know, what prompted you to pen this book now? And what was your intention in bringing it to the world? Well, a lot of the, the teachings and the things that I've done have just been shared uh, more in audiovisual. I People would say, you know, you're like a talking mystic. And I said, yeah, I, I love the silence, but I, I am very willing to be spoken through uh, if, it, if it brings a blessing. And so, uh, as I mentioned to you when I first met you, it's just been so many travels to so many countries and I guess around and around and around the world over six continents over decades, actually. And then um, I felt like Jesus had told me, you know, freely you have received, now freely give. And so basically, pretty early on, people started recording the dialogues and the satsangs and the gatherings and sessions, and then I would put them out on the internet. And, uh, and then I was more just like a traveling, talking mystic, uh, not so much into books or uh, writing books or authoring books or anything like that. And then people began um, transcribing uh, the talks, uh, like when Krishnamurti or so forth would go and share. Yogananda did a lot of uh, traveling and talks and speaking. And then thankfully we have recordings <laughs> and then transcribers and transcriptions. And, you know, you can feel the presence just, you know, coming behind the words. It's so strong. But this book is is kind of designed to uh, be very broad reaching. You know, I know with your book too, the languaging is so wonderful because we have uh, even people who endorse the book come from such a wide range from everything for me, from quantum physicists to people that are in religion or Eastern, you know, that's kind of a testimony to that we don't really box ourselves in too much with the languaging because the, the experience is so important to us. And so I think right. that's how the languaging. Thing. It's a challenge to, you know, speak from our experience and we all have a cosmology and lineages that have, that we've come up out of and that are central. Um, and yet language itself can be a real challenge when what the important thing is, is pointing people into direct experience and the, the infinite possibility of everyone to experience grace 
the living presence of what we all really are and the miraculous truth of, you know, of existence. I find that the, the languaging will come out in so many different ways uh, as I travel. And uh, if somebody had a, a, like a camera or a little bird's eye view on me, they would just laugh because as I'm traveling with Buddhists or with Christians or Hindus or atheists, they would see how much fun um, I have with, with, uh, with, athe with everybody. And, the, and interestingly enough, um, you asked me about Jesus. To me, it's a, it's a very deep connection to that non-dual presence. We really need to, to love everyone. We can't, we can't split hairs over theology, over uh, cultures, over background, or even words. Uh, and that's been what I feel is the most important thing, just to feel that presence of love and not uh, let any differences uh, come in, in our way. There's only one fabric, you know, that existence and everything and everyone in existence is made of the same divine fabric that we might call God or unity, but that in that divine fabric, there are multiple displays, multiple forms, multiple beings, and incredible diversity, and that that diversity is not necessarily a problem, actually, it can be very beautiful. So I find it really yeah. lovely to recognize that we don't have to stamp out difference, so we can appreciate difference when we understand that we're all part of one divine fabric of being, and that there is infinite uniqueness in everything that is displayed that can enrich us and help us to learn more, see more, expand more, appreciate more, you know, discover more of what and who we really are. Yeah, I find it's, it's quite amazing when we open up to spirit in the way that we've done and there's such deep presence. And of course, um, both you and I have been really looked into the the history of spirituality, you know, we've, we've been curious, like little children, uh, looking at the tradition. Uh, I, when I think of us, I think of uh, actually uh, those 10 characteristics of teacher of God, starting with trust, followed by honesty, consistency. But the last one is open-mindedness. Yeah. And Jesus says it's, that's why it's the last, because it's, it tends to come in out of all those traits. And... And I think if you just look at, at our languaging, at uh, us talking on the one hand about uh, Rumi or Nizakadatta or Ramana or Jesus, uh, it flows. And, and the great Indian saints, the huge traditions there, um, it's a very natural to us because, uh, because we've been curious and we've been very open-minded uh, and flexible. And I find, too, that we both feel how central grace is, we see the value of stillness and rest and silence and surrender. But both of us, interestingly enough, having dealt with the Course, a pathway that has nine chapters on dedicated to relationships, that, that we see that as the crucible. We see that as the practicality. We see that as uh, not just running to the Himalayas and and spending 10, 12, 15 hours, but we see the, the, the speed up, the acceleration of allowing that mechanism uh, to be used by the spirit. And so I find uh, even when we met, you know, we were talking and, and, and then when I read your book, it, it kind of filled in a little more because uh, uh, I had a student many years ago who visited uh, you and Robert over there, and she came back from England, and she was glowing. Oh my God! I met the most, two most amazing people, uh, Robert and Miranda, and and she was going on and on. And then when I met you, we talked, and, and then when I read the first chapter of your book about being in that cave uh, in India, maybe around 36 years old, and going through a divorce, and I, I just thought, there's the crucible. Because I, I could feel like it, the, those nine chapters are saying, you know, 
you've come so close to perfect union and oneness with the source, you have one hurdle and that's special relationship. And you're just so close. And, and for both of us, I think if anybody really read, if we had autobiographies or they could really see the whole, the whole thing that we went through, that, that it was actually, the, it was a cracking open. Uh, I know that was a point of devastation for you. Yeah. And I've gone through that too. And, and then suddenly I dropped after I cracked. <laughs> I dropped so deep. And I know you did too. And it's, that's wonderful. There are certain things that didn't, that I kind of chose to leave on the cutting room floor when I was writing the book. And one of them was, and in part for various reasons, you know, I thought some of it would be unnecessarily scary for people. But one of the things that, you know, I was feeling was two years prior to that awakening in the cave, I could feel a whole new level knocking on the inner door in my meditations. And I felt for a number of years like I was living on a, what I was sort of manifesting or living was about 20% of my capacity. Now, if I'd spoken that to someone, they would have said, you're crazy. Look at what you're doing. And, but I knew inwardly this, this wasn't my lifetime's work. You know, I had a task to do to set up this seminary. And, but I felt quite suppressed inwardly. And I could feel this whole other totality of surrender beckoning. And I would feel that knocking in my meditations as if I would almost disappear into a very deep void that we just sort of, I go just poof, you know. And I would notice myself just kind of pulling back from that threshold internally. And one point I even, you know, got curious, like how come I'm holding back? And I could recognize a fear that it might cost me my marriage if I let myself go there. Well, it did. And, but there was this point in the cave where there was just no stopping it, you know. And it was after that that what had looked like a really wonderful marriage and had been a really wonderful marriage for 15 years started to come apart. And I remember just feeling, okay, what's needed is just to say yes. Wherever this is going, to trust enough to say yes. And I really understood deeply then why the importance of those characteristics of the teachers of God that had always meant a lot to me and that so much of it hinges on our capacity to trust. So much of the possibility for another level of surrender or letting go really asks for that. Could we trust that the pulse of existence is loving goodness that only wants what's best for us and that knows what's best for us and that we can completely yield to that, even though it might ask us to let go of something that is precious on an ordinary level. And so I was hearing in the middle of the night, you know, in those days, you know, I was praying, you know, help me to really see what the invitation is here so I can say yes. And I heard the same voice that spoke in the cave, ask me questions. And it was the who mm. are you without questions. And it went through every single attachment that I had, starting with who are you without your marriage? Who are you without your social standing? Who are you without a home? Who are you without this country? Who are you without your friends? I mean, it did not mince around. There wasn't a single attachment that I wasn't asked who are you without that. And then finally, and I was journaling this, of course, at 2 a.m., who are you without Miranda? And as I was writing the M of my name, the pen ran out. <laughs> I know. And I kind of, hey, I get it. This is like total let go into what I don't know. So it was this amazing period of emptying out that went on for about two years. And now that I look back on that period of time, I see it as the most extraordinary training because there was nothing left and the only way to deal with everything was just to pray what's needed now in that moment 
and just do that. Which meant being radically present and radically attuned and radically humble and radically yielded in and amidst tackling big things. And it was in that two years that something very foundational in me changed and the experience being in this world in a, from a very different platform inside. But it's such a blessing and provides so much capacity to share because I've looked into the, the things that scared me the most. And what I realized is there really is actually nothing to fear, which The Course of Miracles has been saying this whole time, very simply, but you don't know it till you know it. Yeah, yeah. I know so. it will be such a blessing as we, we share this uh, with the world because uh, so many write to me every day, every week for, for years, for decades about what they fear the most. And uh, what you've just described is, is just facing that with such grace and such surrender. And then I always like to, to uh, share with everybody as we come out the other side and go, oh my gosh, I can't believe I was so afraid of, of those things at all. Those were just attachments. It's, we, we laugh. But, but also the sanghas you do, the satsangs, the gatherings I share, the presence that radiates through, and the beloveds. I know you have that same experience like I do, that, that call you to different parts of the world, that, that nurture you, that love you, that, that bring such caring, that they, they light up, that this is relationship transformed. This, these are reflections of a mind that is aligned with, with source. So the love, it just radiates out and the reflections are everywhere. And that's what I want people to know that, that even though they can be frightened of losing something or frightened of abandonment or rejection, those are very common, that once you yield, uh, it's it's not that experience at all. It's it's a, it's amazing. It's miraculous. It's just kind of evolved now, where I've I've been doing almost like uh, like kind of almost like online satsangs, like uh, Muji does, where uh, I, I'm on this intimate experience, and there's a hundred plus beings sprinkled in the little sparks of light all over, from Australia to Japan to Europe and all around, and then and. Uh, Oftentimes people think, well, it won't be quite the same digitally, but then the, the tears and the breakthroughs and we're all cheering each other on every month and, and it's my heart just bursting with joy because uh, you can see, even when I get an email of someone saying, oh, I'm in such a dark place now and you know, I wish I could come on and I said, come on and then they come on and you see that crack of a smile that comes and my heart just burst open you really feel like wow there's just one of us yeah. here and it's so different from that old way of perceiving relationships it's very different i was unsure at first whether the transmission would get through on the online and i have been pleasantly surprised in the power of what is possible through this medium and the blessing of that that gives the possibility for people wherever they are in the world at little or no cost to become part of a global sangha you know to be connected and i feel that there is no such thing as an individual awakening you know there's no such thing as your awakening separate to mine we're going to come home together or not at all you know because awakening means that we evolve beyond just you know me and my you know, so I think in that understanding, any way that we possibly can form spiritual friendship and community and help one another to engage and practice, the better. I really enjoy that too, because it's like an invitation there, even when we travel to, to know we have a beloved invitation to just go and be engulfed and embraced in that love and rejoice, absolutely rejoice at, the, at the, what the Spirit is and what the Spirit is, is extending. And to me, that, 
that feels so good. It, it doesn't feel like a big wide world anymore. It just feels like a huge invitation. And I'm always like jumping, jumping right in and, and loving to collaborate. Uh, I was at the lunch the other day and somebody wrote and said, oh, I'm, I'm on your online movie watcher's guide to enlightenment. And I'm, oh my gosh, I'm watching movies with you and listening to your commentary. And, and she said, I have a, a program on, uh, it's called Quantum Conversations Podcast. Uh, would you would you collaborate with me? And I said I would love. To I just wait for those collaborative, you know, from the heart invitations of, of where we have a recognition, where we feel the joy, and and I'm not interested in concepts or proliferating anything in form or uh, anything like that. But I do love the heart, this way of the heart, and and feeling the grace so strong, you know, that's, that's my greatest joy. We're just at a place now where the practical experience is everything to us and the concepts are nothing. So whether we're out at a diner, whether we're talking to somebody who's had their house burned down, one of the people in our uh, group uh, was, was part of those wildfires in Canada. And, and she said, it's coming close, it's getting, oh, but here it goes, my house is burned down. So the same kind of things that are happening in these very interesting times, but there's that love and that connection and support and nurturing that's there. And it doesn't really have anything to do with any of the, the concepts or the categories of the world. I know if somebody met you, like, like I sat down at a Course in Miracles conference and met you, but if they met you basically in any context imaginable, those characteristics and, and that presence and those attributes just, they, it just comes so naturally from you. Yeah. Uh, it's who you are and it can't yeah. be separated. I think that's what happens to us all. And it's so profound when we recognize the miraculous process of transformation and it's humbling and we understand what our part is and what's not our part um, yeah. and that then more of what we yeah. are uh, shines and it's a blessing for everybody yeah yeah it seems to me i'm getting more and more aware of when in a course in miracles it's spoken that this world is backwards and upside down and so things that I had viewed in my life as, as challenges, as struggles, as devastations, uh, now with this higher perspective, uh, I just kind of have a bursting gratitude. And, and I, see, I, I see with my life and I see with your life the way our, our parables, our stories have gone that, that um, like you starting off in Australia, and I, and I enjoyed hearing all the things you went through in Australia, because that was like a whole thing of, you know, not quite fitting in, and I, I could, yeah, there, there, that's, yeah, yeah, I could see that. And then over to England and the interfaith thing, and, you know, and then the huge crack open, and then the, like feeling, oh my gosh, I haven't done my life's calling yet. I, yeah, yeah, I could just relate. And then here now, and then with the Sanghas and, and San Rafael and the Sonoma County and all that area, you know, it's like, it's, there's a flowering happening. And you can just feel the blessing that even when you were uprooted, we'll say, from Australia and then uprooted again, and then the India experience, but, but that uprooting I see now is a blessing. Uh, at the time I was going through my uprootings, I didn't see it big part of the work is just staying in our body, staying present and feeling everything and recognizing that you're not going to die from just staying present and feeling everything. You, you know, all of it needs to be met with love. And if it's met with love, then what is true will shine forth more freely. And what was never really true will dissolve and will be seen as an untruth. Yeah. And then it does no power to hurt you. And yeah. what happens in the process of that is we become wiser and more compassionate in relation to the, the human condition and everyone else. We have more understanding of 
you know, the immensity of what it is to be a human being and the mystery of being a human being, the incredible opportunity it is to have all of our experiences and the opportunity to learn and grow about who we really are and what really matters from life itself. To me, I always seem to talk a lot about um, divine providence because, I mean, for the human being and, and for human beings, it seems like uh, that survival thing is so strong and there's so much uh, learning and conditioning that goes into that. And then, like you said earlier, I think trust is actually the key for everything. It's, it, it allows us to surrender. It's not, uh, it's not like we have to push something or force something. It just that it just grows. And to me, that's what my experience has been is that it's so many floods of miracles like it it was like a, a big convincing job to convince me to let go of of concerns around survival even uh of the daily concerns that that is so heavily conditioned and i find that no matter what i i call the retreats undoing the doer or into the mystic or whatever topics we go at it seems like we get back to that core, like for someone saying, sentimentally, I'm with you. I like the vibe of this, but here's some things that I just am dealing with on a daily basis. And I'm like, oh, let's go in to those and let's really face those and look at those inquiry. Let's use, use the moment to, to have inquiry. Is it really so? Is it really so? And then with that love and that compassion, uh, watching the faces light up, all of us light up when we discover uh, that we are, we are cared for, that we are carried, that that divine providence and grace is our inheritance. It's, it's, it's natural for us. It's not uh, pie in the sky. It's not just for the St. Francis and you know, Mother Teresa. It's, it's real. Yeah, so one of the things I've found you know i agree with you completely and that you know what really helps in cultivating trust is to allow space for our mistrust to get aired you know because i think mm -hmm. you know most people that i speak to they really want to trust but they find it difficult at times you know and i think we all know how that feels and so a question that i'm always giving to my students where which we practice in pairs you know like a repeating question it's what limits your capacity mm -hmm. to trust the loving goodness underlying your life. Because so often we think of trust and we think of trusting another person. And we all know that, you know, human beings who aren't fully enlightened are limited in their trustworthiness. You know, they're not trying to be mean necessarily, but the degree to which any of us are caught in our defenses and our fears is going to limit our capacity to be loving and to be, you know, kind and responsive to one another. And so it's not necessarily about placing our trust in the capacity of another to always be a certain way for us, because we all know that that might always, might not always be so, that there are limitations that we all have. And that's okay. But the trust we need is the trust in the fact that the pulse of life is beneficent that loving presence is very real. It is the foundation of everything. And, you know, to flush out our beliefs, our concerns, our felt sense that that's not so. And just to let it air out, let it detoxify with our friend in front of us, just saying thank you to whatever it is that we say. You know, just letting it flush out until it flushes out. And then we can explore, you know, what's holding us right now. Yeah. It's like happy dreams come true, not because they're real, but because they're happy. <laughs> that's the, that's the whole thing where it's like, a, like that mystical moment where everything's vibrating and, and you just are fully experiencing it, but there's no, uh, no sense of causation or no sense of otherness with it. It's just uh, so all inclusive and, I just love that you're sharing that because this, this is, I think it's important to take something like you said, let's take mysticism off the pedestal. Let's take mysticism out of the closet. Uh, let's be truly 
percent transparent because why would we want to be anything else? And I find when we have no private thoughts, no secrets to keep, nothing to hide, then what flowers, the, the fragrance, what comes from that is, is so exquisite. And it's so effortless, it's so natural. There, there's not any kind of, uh, of, of uh, having to do something for it or even to maintain it. It's just, it's just given. Yeah. 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 Oh, thank you. Thank Beautiful. you, Marie. Yeah, bless you and thank you. It's just, wow. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah.